are the people of Gaza, brothers and sisters? The people of Gaza are merely Palestinians who lived outside in different villages and neighborhoods and cities in Palestine before 1948, before, the, before Israel became a state. When the massacres began in 1948 in a thing, the first massacre called Deir Yassin, in which it was an atrocity and a massacre and murder, the people ran away from their villages and cities. Where did they go? They went as refugees to a little, small, tiny strip of land, which is surrounded by the Mediterranean Sea, a little bit by Egypt and the rest of it by the Israeli state today. It is a small pocket, about 40 kilometers long, 11 kilometers wide. It is called the Gaza Strip. These Palestinians are refugees thinking that they were going to get temporary safety and security there, only to know that the military came in, blocked them, did not allow them to leave, for 75 years and for 16 years straight, complete blockage. Nobody can come in, nobody can get out. There are villages and cities a walking distance away from Gaza, wallahi, they cannot even walk back to their cities. And so they were trapped there in what is famously called an open air prison. Children who were born there and haven't even reached 16 years old. They don't know what the world is like. All they've seen is a prison. They will probably never see themselves growing up, graduating with a degree or an education. They will never see electricity in a full day. They will never know if they will have water tomorrow. They'll probably die of thirst, which is actually what's happening. These children who are born there, they have never had a day without gunfires and shots and missiles. They've become so immune to them that it's very normal as they play Skippy and hot scotch and, and all that stuff, whatever it is, games that little children play while the missiles above them are falling. Some of them have never been able to see another Palestinian outside of Gaza. What is their crime? We saw the man who is in the rubbles of his building that had fallen. He's holding a big teddy bear next to him and another doll. His wife and two children whom he loved buried under the rubble. We all saw it. What is his crime? What are their crime? Another Martyr, insha'Allah, wrote this which affected me. He says to the entire world, this isn't about physical restfulness, the absence of thought or the scarcity of sorrow. It's the peace of knowing that everything belongs to God, to Allah, that rewards are renewed in proportion to your patience and your repentance. You will definitely be tested, he says, whether through loss, illness or other trials, but Allah is just and to him we shall return. So find your solace in drawing near to him. This is a person dying under the missiles. No fear, except he is feeling, he is feeling worry for us everywhere in the world. These people are not afraid, my dear brothers and sisters. They're used to it. They know that their children, inshallah, are birds in paradise. They know that they will be waiting for them at the doors of Jannah. This is the Muslim's belief. What immense faith all these people have strength beyond our imagination, la ilaha illallah. Some of them said, soon we'll probably be wiped out. Please just remember that we once existed here, the Gazan Palestinians. My brothers and sisters, today we are witnessing oppression and injustice happening to our brothers and sisters in Gaza. Muslims and Christians, where the killing, destruction, annexation, illegal settlement and occupations as declared by the UN and in accordance with the international law, I'm not even quoting the Quran here. We are witnessing a retaliation of something they call collective punishment, as termed in the international law of innocent civilians, half of which are children. The numbers have surged beyond that any sane mind can fathom to a people who have been trapped there. My dear brothers and sisters, do not misunderstand me. Islam forbids all forms of unjust killings, whether they are Muslim, Christian or Jews or any other people of any religion in the world. So much so that the Prophet wasallam said, beware of the prayer of the oppressed, any oppressed person, for there is no veil between it and Allah, Sahih al-Bukhari. And Allah says, do not transgress even in a fight with someone who is fighting you. But there is a difference between re relentlessly wiping out entire cities, relentlessly killing thousands of innocent civilians 
children, women and men who are not fighting and are unarmed. On top of that, being persecuted, trapped and imprisoned and denied their basic human rights and needs on and off for 75 years and counting. These people, brothers and sisters, we have not yet heard one of them with a recording cursing the Jews or mentioning Israel in a bad way. These people don't hate the Jews. Muslims don't hate Jews or Christians or any people because of merely their faith, brothers and sisters. Nor do they want to kick out the Jews and the Israelites, but want basic equality, basic human rights, basic right to their own homes, basic right to peace and security, basic right to their own state. During the Islamic rule, we have witnessed two perfect examples of how the Muslim empire protected and respected the rights of Jews and Christians to live peacefully and harmoniously together in Palestine. In the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, the second Khalifa in the seventh century who welcomed back the Jews into Palestine and Jerusalem after they were exiled, exiled into what they call a diaspora, a diaspora out of Jerusalem, Palestine for 500 years. And in the seventh century, he welcomed them back and let them live in peace and security and gave them their rights to the point where the Jews who were welcomed back made dua in their synagogues for Amir al-Mu'minin Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, Wallah, this is in the history. And the time of Salah al-Din al-Ayyubi, the 12th century commander and sultan, who also liberated Palestine and then during his in entire time allowed the Jews and Christians to live peacefully and security with all their rights, even through the Ottoman Empire until it fell in World War I in 1921 or 22. The Jews had all the rights with homes, even some of them reached government positions. So no, our religion and Islam and the Muslims do not want to wipe out Jews. They don't want to wipe out people who call themselves Israelis. We don't want to wipe out Christians. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not send Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to do that. One companion said, Ya Rasulallah, curse the kuffar, curse the disbelievers. Il anhum. He said, Lam ub'athu la'anan. I was not sent as a cursor. What does Allah instead say about him? Wa ma arsalnaka illa rahmatan lil alameen. We have not sent you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam except as a mercy to all the worlds. But we have to stand up against injustice. If we don't stand up against injustice, Allah says many places of worship, synagogues, churches and houses in which Allah's name is mentioned will be continuously destroyed, but we have to stand. And the Quran specifically mentions different places of worship.